Hey yogis, it's Patrick. This segment is back bends and thigh stretches. And what I find about back bends is that they'll do one of two things. They'll either totally shut us down or rev us up. The idea of yoga is to find the place in the middle, of course. So I invite you to try to be there. And while you're centered, also drop in to your courage, which is a core quality. Let's go. So we're gonna start out in downward facing dog. And check to see that your hands are out of shoulder distance apart, that your second fingers are straight forward, and push down through your knuckle heads, push down through your fingertips so much that there's less weight in your wrists. Then squeeze your forearms toward each other, turn your biceps forward until your triceps tone and keep pushing the weight into your knuckles. Then, start to move your chest back, but it's a balance between keeping the uh, shoulders lifted in the way in your knuckles and melting into the upper back. So we get to go slow here. The further you go back with the chest, the harder you have to work to lift your shoulders and externally rotate your shoulders. Keep your knuckles grounded. Align your ears with your arms, and begin to find length in your spine, through your neck spine and up through your tail. You should be pressing out of your shoulders, creating space, and really the work in the pose is to keep turning those inner biceps forward and widening your shoulder blades while deepening the chest back toward your knees. And don't let your head sag. Keep your ears in line with your arms. Good. And inhale. Come forward. Plank pose. And then you can either lower down through Chaturanga if that's a part of your practice, or simply lower your knees, bend your elbows, and ease your way down to the floor. Okay. So come all the way down. The first thing I want you to do is lengthen your legs, so stretch them both back. Get really long from your low back to your legs. Then, bring your hands onto the sides of your hips. The thumbs will be around the back and your fingertips on the front hip points, or ASIS. Keeping those legs long, I want you to tuck your pelvis a lot, so lengthen your butts towards your heels and pull your hip points towards your ribs a lot until you can draw your low belly in. Keeping that, inhale, lift your chest up and wide. Exhale, pull the shoulders back. Hug the shoulder blades down the back without losing the hips or the core. Good. Then stretch your fingers straight back. And as you lengthen those arms back, you're gonna feel the shoulder blades come onto the back more. That's the point. Keeping your back extended, place your fingertips on the floor, and this is going to be wide hands. Inhale, lift your chest up and wide again. Exhale, tuck the pelvis. Inhale, lift the chest a little higher. Exhale, shoulders back. Now, without moving your hands, pull your hands apart and squeeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades together. The elbows can be wide here. Move your chest forward, lift your chin up a little, enjoy your back bend. Nice, and then release just as slowly as you came in, one vertebra at a time, until you get all the way down to your forehead. Hmm. Bring your arms to the floor, 
and just take a few breaths. The key to not getting shut down by back bends is to not rest too, too long. So here's the next one. Lift your chest up, bring your elbows directly under your shoulders. Sphinx pose. Now, lengthen your legs, tuck your pelvis so your belly is off the floor, and inhale, move your chest forward and wide. Exhale, pull the elbows back to keep moving the thoracic spine in or the upper back in, just like you did in downward dog. <clears throat> now, thinking of Sphinx as kind of your base pose, bend your right knee, reach back with right arm and take hold of the inner ankle. So the knee will slide out wide sometimes, keep it straight back, roll the right hip point down toward the floor, push the left hand into the floor, keep the belly drawing in, the tailbone scooping, remember all that, then bring the foot forward into the thigh stretch. Some of you may be able to roll your hand over the top of your foot and point the elbow back. No big deal if you can't quite get that, and you're just here with a straight arm, that's great. <clears throat> Let's switch from the right elbow under the shoulder. Take a couple of breaths here to refine your sphinx pose. Second side, bend the left knee, reach back with left arm, take hold of the inner ankle, keep the legs parallel, the hips square-ish, the tailbone tucked and the belly lifting. Then bring your foot toward the outer hip and floor. If possible, roll uh, your hand over the tops of the toes so the fingers face forward and the elbow is back. There's a slight twist to this pose, so turn your inner body to the right mm -hmm, and level the hips. Lengthen through your legs, tuck your pelvis, pull your shoulders back and your chest forward into the thigh stretch. Good. And release. Nice. Simply rest your forehead on the floor. Take a few breaths. And then come back to downward facing dog pose. So that's it for this segment. I encourage you to repeat and refine your form or to repeat and add other backbends that you might know.